All right, so we are here with King. Hey, King, how are you? Great, yeah, good to be uh, talking to you. Yes, yes, good to have you on the summit. A lot of people, including me, I'm a fan of yours, and you are everywhere. You're really promoting the ecosystem in Hong Kong, and, and I, I think um, maybe first tell us a little bit about a background about yourself before you invest Hong Kong, stuff that you've, you've been doing, and then we dive into your role in the ecosystem. Well, uh, I've been uh, working in the private sector for over two decades before joining the government working for Invest Hong Kong. I'm a curious person by nature. So I've been working in a lot of uh, different disciplines from consulting in the US, in the UK. I did a little bit of venture capital and then I started my own company. In fact, I started several companies. And then uh, I also the, got a dip in the uh, angel investment aspects. Uh, before I joined government. So I also served in a number of uh, associations and boards uh, in marketing and technology. So I've been uh, you know, getting a lot of uh, interesting experience from different places. So you're curious and you're curious, curious about FinTech. What is going on? Oh, in absolutely. FinTech? Yes. Well, well, basically the FinTech, as you know, has been uh, around for literally uh, three, four decades even before the term uh, has been uh, used by folks uh, since 2008. Now, but then if we really look at uh, what's happening uh, in FinTech in Hong Kong, but we've been coming a long way. I still remember uh, several years ago when we read the, the, uh, the FinTech adoption on consumers, even if you take it back to, um, I would say 2015, around that time. So the adoption was really low. We're talking about you know, below the 30s, uh, 30 percent out. Now, but now uh, in a recent uh, study from EMY, the consumer adoption uh, in Hong Kong has actually shot up to 67 percent in 2019. So definitely, the Hong Kong has come a long way uh, in the past few years. Yeah, you know, we are a, a fintech nation global summit. There are many nations, there are many fintechs from all over the world. Why is everybody looking into uh, Hong Kong? What's going on there in the ecosystem? Like, what, what's going on over there? Well, again, uh, I think the, the, there are a lot of de developments around FinTech. Well, in the, uh, let's say the CB Insight study, they have uh, basically categorized FinTech into 10 different segments. Now, obviously, we are also a big fan of uh, Israel. Yeah, for a lot of uh, great stuff, you know, great innovation coming out of Israel in cybersecurity, uh, insure tech, I mean, the list go on. Now, but then we will look at the Hong Kong ecosystem. Now, just, just to be, I guess, a bit more focused, obviously there are a lot of things happening, but two things really stand out uh, that I'd like to highlight or uh, to share with the audience. Now, first of all, you know, the HMA, the Hong Kong Marcher Authority, now has been uh, working tirelessly in the past few years in, in a way, fostering the uh, ecosystem forward. And since they wear several hats, now on the one hand, the HMA is the de facto central bank in Hong Kong. Now, so for projects like digital currency, which is a really hot topic around the world, the HMA has been playing a very instrumental role in uh, providing leadership for Hong Kong, and also the bridge with mainland China and also with uh, other ASEAN countries, such as the, uh, Thailand. Now, the other thing is about uh, digital banking because uh, we look at other markets, more advanced market, you know, such as let's say UK. So have been doing a great job in promoting, you know, let's say Neo Bank, Digital Bank and so on. And Hong Kong being a financial center, we also feel that this is a very good uh, way to help uh, in a way give the uh, incumbent banks a nudge to uh, speed up the innovation. So that's why again, HMA has stepped forward and they have uh, issued the new regulation around uh, you know, virtual banking. So basically, I think the whole idea is that they would like to put forward an initiative to give out uh, licenses to new players to come into Hong Kong to promote more innovation. So, so far, the HMA has given out eight virtual banking licenses uh, since last year. So that's why these two trends in terms of digital currency and also the virtual banking have been widely covered by a lot of media around the world. So virtual banking, can you mention some of the, the players just that comes, comes to mind? Virtual sure. banks? Now, absolutely. Now, the eight licenses were given out uh, end of last year. And uh, essentially, 
when we look at uh, the eight, actually four of them already uh, become uh, fully operational. So I just want to just quickly uh, say a few names. So ZA, uh, which is uh, the virtual bank where the parents is uh, Zhongan, the first virtual uh, insurer uh, in mainland China, uh, an amazing company. Now the second uh, virtual bank that got the uh, fully operational uh, status is uh, Airstar, which is a JV between uh, AMTD, the largest uh, private investment bank headquartered in Hong Kong, and also a client of theirs, uh, Xiaomi, uh, which is the, the, the cell phone the manufacturer, and now they came into IoT, so being the, uh, the JV partner. So the two of them uh, put together Airstar. Now the third one that came uh, online is WeLab, which is the, uh, the unicorn from Hong Kong. We are very proud of them. In fact, I think in the uh, Financial Times uh, recent uh, ranking for the fastest growing technology company across Asia Pacific. Now, not just FinTech, across all technology segments. Wow. Wow. Now, WeLab actually ranked number two uh, in that uh, financial, uh, uh, financial Times uh, ranking for the entire Asia Pacific. Uh, that's why we are just so proud of them for flying the Hong Kong flag. I just so want to mention one. that, uh, I just want to mention, yeah, WeLab is totally with us. They were one of the first to, to jump on the, the summit and, and you know, just, just help and be a part of the ecosystem. So we, we love them I and mean, we love that attitude. Yes, yeah, so uh, I mean, uh, the culture is fabulous. They have a very open-minded uh, uh, CEO, uh, in Simon Long, who is also very major uh, advocates of FinTech uh, you know, of Hong Kong. So that's why the, we, just, we just love Simon and his team. Wow. So, the, so we got WeLab. And the fourth one that uh, came online is uh, Levy. So Levy is uh, basically uh, have uh, several big names uh, shared with us as well, you know, from the Bank of China, you know, to Jardines, right, to the, also the, J, the JDD, which is the uh, uh, Jingdong uh, Digital. Uh, and so essentially they have the bank expertise. They have the retail channels, because uh, Jardin owns many uh, famous uh, retail brands, you know, the, the Mannings, which is the equivalent of Boots, you know, in, uh, yeah, in Europe, you know, they got the supermarket. So they have a lot of ready to go lifestyle brands as the channels. And then you got JDD, which is the, uh, the Jardin, uh, so it's JD.com, it's sort of like FinTech Arm. And, mm -hmm. and JD.com, for those of you who are not familiar, they kind of like the, the China, uh, China Amazon. Wow. So uh, it's a gigantic, enormous uh, company. So again, so they provide the, the FinTech expertise. So you got channels, you got bank expertise, you got the, the technology, uh, know-how. So it's another very formidable, formidable uh, player. So these are the four that are operational. And then there are another four that are slowly uh, coming online as well. From Marx, which is uh, the, uh, basically the owned by Santa Charter. So again, a lot of respect for Santa Charter for taking a very bold move to create a digital bank to basically foster more innovation. And so it's all a nudge the, the, uh, the sister incumbent bank uh, forward, right? And then uh, you, you also got, uh, you know, of course, the end bank of uh, the uh, end financials, which a lot of you might have heard of the recent news about end financials uh, going public again uh, in Hong Kong. And then uh, you, you also have uh, Fusion Bank. So Fusion Bank is the uh, uh, is owned by the uh, Tencent and other technology giants as well as a major uh, shareholder. Okay, and then uh, the fourth one, gosh. Yes, you know what? Somehow my, my, my mind draw a blank. Which, we, which can I don't feel think a whole, that, uh, we can feel a whole summit just with, the, with these. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And you have these, of course, small fintechs, or I don't know if small, but uh, fintech financial services that wants to, want, wants to work with these banks and, you know, and, and fintechs, right? And, want, and play a big part of the ecosystem. It's not just the virtual banks and the banks, right? Oh, absolutely. Now, when we look at the, the Hong Kong fintech ecosystem, we are looking at a very uh, healthy uh, base of over 600 fintechs. So obviously they are representing different segments, you know, from the, again, the insure tech, the wealth tech, the lending, the payments. I mean, the, the usual suspects that we all also see in other parts of the world. Now, but if we were to really single out, so what's the, the sort of largest uh, segments and also having a lot of traction and I have to say uh, the, the blockchain space uh, where the, the application is uh, FinTech has been gaining a lot of traction. So this guy is getting the funding and they're doing all sorts of things. And if I were to uh, just uh, name one company, 
uh, to basically illustrate what this is all about. And I, I would like to mention a, a company called CryptoBlock. So CryptoBlock is a blockchain company uh, uh, basically headquartered in Hong Kong and then located at Hong Kong Science Park. And why, why I mention them as a kind of example to illustrate what the, uh, Hong Kong is up to is that now Hong Kong has always been a hub, whether it is for trade or for finance. Now, and obviously as a hub, you know, we are talking about a lot of cross-border transactions. Mm -hmm. now, now, of course, I think the blockchain has always been uh, uh, sort of mentioned by a lot of studies that this is a fabulous uh, technology infrastructure to facilitate uh, the kind of uh, transactions in which you have a lot of players, but the players may not kind of trust each other to share all the data. So blockchain is a fabulous technology to do that. Now, so actually, I think if you look at uh, the recent news, uh, we talked about within the past six months, actually there's a very major, there's a big deal in which, uh, you know, uh, again, mainland China, as many people know, has been a big importer of uh, commodities. From, you know, from oil to iron ore, you know, to, to soya beans. So just a big buyer. Now, and obviously uh, with that in mind, so th there's a lot of the thoughts that go into how do you uh, create more efficiency? So essentially there was a big news that uh, Bao Steel, a major uh, steel player uh, in uh, mainland China, they've been buying a lot of iron ores from, you know, let's say Rio Tinto from Australia. Now, instead of doing it sort of the old fashioned way, they decided to do it in a sort of innovative way. So they, they basically would like to do transactions on blockchain. Uh, and then uh, over time, the, set, the, the settlement would be uh, even more on RMB as opposed to other currencies like Euro, US dollar, and so on. So this is uh, basically very transform transformative. You know, the trade finance, you know, where you have the banks uh, in the back, and then the transaction on the blockchain, and then maybe over time settle in RMB. And the blockchain company, that yeah. basically bring this to life is crypto block the hong kong based uh you know the blockchain company so and we're wow. very proud of them as well. i'm sure people right now are listening and writing notes about the, <laughs> these companies uh, and you're like a database i i knew this talk is important because you have so much knowledge and everybody knows you uh, in the ecosystem and you know a lot of the players in the ecosystem so uh yeah it's 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 like a database it's like a walking database Tell me about uh, the role that Invest Hong Kong plays. I know that you also have the FinTech Week, uh, that we are also partnering with you and we are happy to partner with you because we are creating, all of us are creating the, these FinTech bridges that you mentioned between the, the FinTech nations, right? Um, so tell us about um, the role of Invest Hong Kong, maybe a little bit also about the FinTech Week and other stuff that you're doing. Sure. Now, first of all, uh, let me just talk a little bit about the role in you know, Hong Kong before we get into the details of uh, uh, the Hong Kong FinTech Week. Now, the, uh, the, the FinTech team at Invest Hong Kong uh, is a relatively uh, newer team within Invest Hong Kong. Because the Hong Kong has been contributing a lot you know, to the uh, you know, development and evolution of many sectors you know, since uh, actually 20 years ago. So Invest Hong Kong has always been there. And the way it is to uh, attract and invite some of the great, greatest companies around the world to set up in Hong Kong so that we can bring in more expertise, you know, create jobs, you know, uh, investment, and so on. Now, but then in 2016, uh, recognizing the need to give the uh, FinTech some extra push, some extra uh, energy, if you will. So the FinTech team uh, was born. And then, uh, so my predecessor has done a great job uh, for the past few years. And I joined the team uh, about 15, 16 months ago to basically carry on uh, the, the great work from our predecessor. So essentially, the, the, the one thing that would be easiest to understand what uh, our team is doing is that we are kind of like the, uh, the hub, or we are like the connector. So that uh, obviously there are a lot of uh, organizations within the Hong Kong from both the public sector side and private sector side that can offer help from the regulators to the accelerators, right, to the, uh, the VCs, universities, but there's just so many of them. So that's why for a new, new player trying to enter the Hong Kong market, it can be a bit sort of, uh, um, I guess, um, puzzling, right? So who, who should I talk to first? So I think to basically make the life easier for the entrepreneurs to come in the Hong Kong market, I think they're welcome to just talk to us. And since we are plugged into majority of the stakeholders, so then the understanding needs, then after, afterwards we can basically get yeah, points and connect the entrepreneurs, say from Israel, uh, to talk to the right parties in Hong Kong. 
So this is a way to sort of accelerate and fast track the market entry. Now, so, so with that in mind, we also would uh, actually wear a second hat, is that now in addition to helping overseas companies from, from Israel, from UK, the US, Singapore, mainland China and so on, we also feel that it's important that we have a very healthy and vibrant uh, ecosystem in Hong Kong, so that uh, when folks uh, come, come over to Hong Kong, there are all these uh, supporting infrastructure. You know, yeah. The clients are welcoming and, and everything, so that the uh, doing business is uh, easier. So as a result, we will spend a lot of time working with our uh, very good partners from Starport, the Science Park, the FinTech Association, to really understand, so what are the bottlenecks in the market? And with the, when that bottlenecks, that might require some help in which uh, we would need to sort of uh, pull in uh, you know, the government the departments to offer help. So we will basically be the one uh, liaising with the private sector, and then we will work with the different public sector partners to try to solve the problem. So this is another way for us to help uh, foster you know, and, and basically push ahead the FinTech agenda. Yeah, and, and, and the FinTech Week is, a, is another initiative uh, with all these partners together, you partner up all the ecosystem to boost the FinTech industry. Correct, yes. Now, so the FinTech Week, uh, again, is a flagship event uh, for Hong Kong. Uh, in fact, the Hong government put a lot of emphasis in it. So the, this is our fifth uh, year anniversary, wow. as a matter of fact. So it started from 2016, and I, I wasn't there when my, when my boss uh, started this with my predecessor. But I was told that the first year we got something like 500 people. And then the next year we got like 3,000 or something, third year 5,000, uh, fourth year, actually, no, sorry, take it back. Third year we got 8,000. And last year, actually we got like 12,000. Now, so, so that's why this year, wow. since because of the, uh, the pandemic, we felt that uh, well, doing it virtually, 100% is the way to go. So and because of that sort of like borderless uh, arrangement, we feel that we want to reach out to more folks around the world. So at the moment, uh, we are projecting that we get to get uh, over 25,000 attendees wow. and also over uh, 10, 100,000 viewers because there, there'll be a lot of contents being broadcasted, even yeah. for those who are not registered, right? So, so that's why this year, the 50th anniversary, we're expecting something really big. It's amazing. It's amazing how you... You, we have the, this pandemic and you, you, you even do it bigger. You even, do, you even provide it to everybody. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's exactly how we operated. We, we never stopped. We just, we just included as many partners as we could and uh, as many talks, as many content. And uh, yeah, I mean, um, the idea is not to close an event. The idea is to open up, you know, open up to, to even more audiences. Uh, like the way that we connected is because I saw you in another uh, uh, webinar talking about, you know, um, trends and payments and stuff. Uh, I wanted to ask you before, what do you see in other markets in the world? Are you going and, and see other, you know, trends and, you know, other neighbors, other nations that are growing? Uh, open banking, I don't know uh, what is the situation of open banking or how is it cold over there? Mm -hmm. Well, the, again, the, a lot of uh, respect <laughs> to uh, folks in UK for starting this whole open, open banking, open data, uh, basically revolution, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's just so impactful to the rest of the world. So obviously the Hong Kong, again, uh, because of historical reason, Hong has been working very closely uh, with our counterparts uh, in UK. So HMA, for instance, work very closely with the FCA and all the other regulatory bodies. So we, we basically understand where this is heading. So as a result, uh, we have basically three meaning HMA has done a great job to lay out like a four, four stage approach for promoting the open banking. Now, so right now we just uh, finished uh, stage two. So we are moving into stage three. So I think it, it, takes, uh, it takes some time because after all, one of the, I would say core um, essence of open banking is open data. And uh, of course, I think open data may uh, get uh, some people a bit, uh, I guess, uh, nervous about opening up data. So what's going to happen with privacy or data security? So even though technologically, there are a lot of uh, technologies that can address this already, like a federated data model and, and all that. However, I think there's, there's, there's a perception that, well, is it really safe? So it takes some time. So that's why the you know, HMA has been taking a very prudent, but yet very progressive approach to promote it in a four stage uh, process of this uh, really enormous uh, initiative. 
Before we, we end, I guess we have a couple of minutes. Um, how do people con connect to you? I mean, I, I said before you are all over. Uh, how do they find more information? Um, if they want to connect with Invest Hong Kong, they are, small, they are watching us right now. They have a, a, a nice concept. Uh, you know, they want to work with, with one of these banks that you mentioned or other fintechs. How do they do that? Well, uh, it's very easy. Uh, actually, uh, it's quite easy to find us. I mean, Invest Hong Kong, FinTech. Uh, so the, the other way, actually, I do uh, welcome folks to even, even kind of connect me directly via, my, via LinkedIn, because I think it's just easy. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, uh, we just love to talk to, uh, I think, the, I mean, the, the smart people around the world. Again, we have a lot of respect for folks in Israel. In fact, there are a number of organizations that we work with uh, that, uh, in fact, we are still learning a lot every time we talk to the folks uh, in Israel. So that's why the, uh, we feel that the, the technology, in a way, in Israel in particular, are uh, designed for exports, almost by default. So that's why we also feel that the population size of Hong Kong and Israel are comparable. I think, I think the, the country is somewhere around uh, 10 million, whereas Hong Kong, 7.5. Uh, again, Israel, very entrepreneurial. Hong Kong, the same. So in many ways, that we share a lot in common. So that's why, uh, from a culture standpoint, and also the great respect the Hong Kong enterprises have of uh, Israeli companies, we just welcome uh, folks to contact us, and we'd be happy to assist you uh, in your entry in the Hong Kong market. And one, one thing I want to emphasize, obviously, uh, I think for those of you uh, who have been so sort of, uh, coming uh, through Hong Kong, uh, you probably will agree that uh, Hong Kong has never has never short of capital. We have lots of money. Uh, in the city, of course, because of this uh, financial center position. And just to put in perspective, there's an association in Hong Kong called HKVCA, the Hong Kong the Venture Capital and Private Equity Association, in which uh, all the VC and PEs, firm offices, many of them belong to. So I, you know, we talked to the general manager uh, some time ago, actually just last year, and we, was, we were like, oh, well, by the way, we know that it's a very uh, influential bunch, but then of the you know, roughly a thousand members, actually how much money are these guys uh, managing? I mean, just as an aggregate. So the number we got from the uh, general manager uh, was uh, two trillion US wow. dollars. Okay, it's a lot. Now, again, these are VCs and PEs and you know, the, the, the friend offices, you know, where these folks actually sit in Hong Kong. Okay, so they live here. And so they're managing that two trillion US dollar of private capital ready to be deployed to innovative projects. So that's why the, we would uh, highly encourage uh, folks uh, to contact us. And then we, after we understand what you're doing, we are very happy to connect you with the appropriate uh, investors that are interested in particular areas. I actually have uh, one client here who really wants to connect. Um, I wanted to uh, say before, we all, you know, I'm thinking about what, what you've said and, and all these FinTech nations and opportunities that we have these days. And even just recently, you know, you have the UAE, right? Like Israel mm -hmm. and the UAE, and, and, now, and now it opens up. And the first delegations that are flying from Israel to the UAE are the banks, the fintechs. This, mm -hmm. These are the first, mm -hmm. we, we, we call it a piece, but first it's economy. And who are the first who are flying is the fintech delegations both ways. And that's amazing, you know, that uh, opening up a whole new markets uh, of innovation, of uh, better fintech financial services and we haven't even talked about you know uh, other places you know with uh, lack of payment and unbanked populations that, that we can tap in right unbelievable unbelievable um well i i i can definitely well first of all this is amazing uh, news and i can i can understand why right you think about the just the nature of people working in fintech you got the finance folks you got the technology folks and in both, in both cases, these people are very highly intelligent, they're very aggressive, ambitious, adventurous. So, so, so that's why I'm not, I'm not surprised that we are the first bunch that uh, basically take on this adventurous journey. Yes, I can't wait to collaborate more with you guys. You are amazing. You were, immediately when I approached, you said, yes, of course, we're gonna do that interview. Of course, we're gonna be engaged and help you. And then we are happy to help you. And uh, all of us, uh, all the people here are watching, I really encourage you to register to the FinTech Week and uh, it's gonna be amazing. And uh, the speakers, the lineup and the opportunity here is amazing. 
So we are partners of, of the FinTech Week and of course of Invest on Kong. And uh, very happy to uh, also work with you on our follow-up event. So we'll be uh, at FinTech Hackathon and the FinTech Week also here in Israel. But um, amazing opportunities for, for both of us, all of us. Great. Now, I, I just want to add one thing because I don't want to, to, uh, to miss out anything. Uh, when I just uh, mentioned the names of the eight virtual banks, I just mentioned seven. So I want to mention the eight to make sure that I got a complete record. So the eight, which is also a very important one, is the Ping An One Connect. So Ping An One or Ping An is a gigantic financial conglomerate uh, in China. They have in banking, insurance, the securities, they're everywhere. So again, they also have the Ping An technology in which uh, they have been exporting a lot of the, uh, the banking, financial services uh, sector, uh, new technology you know, from AI and all this uh, great stuff. So the Ping An One Connect actually have uh, also got the uh, uh, virtual banking license. So they're also in Hong Kong. So we are definitely also very excited uh, to, to see how uh, all these new technologies will be adopted in Hong Kong. Good that, uh, that you mentioned. And uh, maybe we're going to write up all the links to these banks and, and help people connect. And of course, they can rewatch it because we're going to have it on our YouTube. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Have a great day over there. And uh, let's build these fintech bridges together. You're an amazing friend. Yep. Yeah, we are happy to do that. Great. Bye. Take care. Okay. All right. Take care.